Hey everybody, Brave Dancer here again. Uh, once again, playing Cyber Knights Flashpoint, uh, the new uh, cyberpunk or Shadowrun inspired uh, heist game that recently hit early access on Steam. Uh, if you're watching this video, I'm going to guess you probably are a little bit familiar with the game and are looking for some help explaining uh, some of the mechanics that are not uh, really fully explained in game yet at this point of the early access. Uh, if you don't know what the game is, I strongly urge you to check it out on Steam. Um, it, it's got a lot of promise, looks pretty good, and the, the developers have a pretty good track record of uh, coming through. So, um, going to go over some matrix, <clears throat> some some matrix mechanics today. Um, it's something that's not really very well explained in game right now. Uh, it has some similarities to some other games that I play, like Shadowrun and some other stuff, so I was able to figure most of the stuff out. Uh, but if for somebody that hasn't played those, it'd probably be a struggle. I know there's been a number of like stuff on the forums and stuff uh, on Steam about it. So I uh, figured I'd put this together and just kind of explain really quick some of the mechanics. Um, I've actually already moved my, my hacker here into position next to a Matrix host. There's one, sometimes more than one, of these Matrix hosts on pretty much every map. Um, so the idea being these are like the entry points to the Matrix. You get your hacker up next to one of them, and then he jacks in, and then the, the screen switches to like a Matrix view. So uh, I've already done one turn of him in this Matrix host, uh, just to kind of reveal a few things so I can kind of explain some concepts. So now I've got to kind of cycle through the, the initiative order until it's his turn again. So I'm going to move my... Uh, my vanguard over here and kind of hunker her down here in this little corner. And uh, I gotta wait for... Oh, she was the last one of the turn. So now I gotta wait for some people to go through their motions. Now it's her turn again. Gonna delay her. Let that guy do his thing. There we go. Now I'm back to my hacker. So it's going to switch automatically to the Matrix view because he was already jacked in. So uh, just a couple of concepts first. Um, you'll notice here the QSEC level. Uh, this pretty much equates to the security level that you'll see like in, in the non-Matrix part of a mission. Uh, the, the concept being uh, this is a representation of the overall alert level, uh, in this case of the Matrix. Um, this will passively, even if you do everything perfectly, it's going to like add a couple of new pips every turn. Um, sometimes depending on your action, it can be a lot more than that. Uh, for example, some of the ice or intrusion countermeasures that you run across uh, will actually generate extra pips every action that you take. So every program that you load or you know, attempt to clean out any ice or anything else will generate extra pips, right? So this can quickly escalate uh, if you're not careful. What will happen is every time this bar gets full, uh, it goes up to a new level. Every new level, there's an event that can happen. Uh, the events can be things, uh, usually things that are bad for you, right? So it generally increases the alert level of things. So defenses may get harder. Maybe stuff that you've previously disabled gets reset, that kind of thing. So, um, Speed is kind of of the ev of the essence to avoid that, but you also got to be careful that you don't uh, inadvertently blunder into something like in an attempt to be fast. Because some of the some of the ice that you come across, if you don't watch for it, see that it's there, and neutralize it, uh, will like randomly teleport you to somewhere else on the map, or or things like that, uh, which can be bad. Uh, you know, they'll teleport you away from some objective node that you're trying to get to or something which slows you down, right? Um, so a couple other concepts. Uh, the, this here is kind of a, uh, the, the status of the matrix host you're connected to. Um, this kind of shows the, um, the host security type, right? So blue is weak, double black is very hard. There's some other levels in between. Uh, the security type, that kind of determines uh, how tough the defenses are that are built into the host, right? And then the um, the other one here is, is mild. That that's kind of a it doesn't ex have a tooltip that explains it, but basically that is um, 
kind of the the how fast the escalation is and stuff like that right so uh, these two in in cooperation are the overall difficulty of the matrix host that you're connected to so this one being blue and mild is you know pretty easy um over here on the left hand side you got some stuff about your hacker uh this is the hacker's hit points which is important because it is possible for your hacker to be damaged both by stuff that happens in the matrix and also by stuff that happens outside the matrix while he's jacked in like so for example uh you can hit some some ice that will damage your hacker's health um you can get stuff that you know dumps you out of the matrix which then does dump shock damage to his health uh or you know some guard can patrol up behind him while he's jacked into the matrix shoot him in the back of the head and that will also damage his health obviously and can even kill him so uh you gotta watch out for that uh this next bar here is your cyber deck health so your cyber deck is your uh, device that you use to connect to the matrix if it gets destroyed uh you are no you're basically no longer a hacker your hacker is now a really gimped physical combatant um so you got to watch out for your cyber deck health currently in the early access there is not a way to repair or replace your cyber deck so it's really important that you watch out for it um there are some things you can do to kind of shield it from damage uh this buff that i already applied on my previous turn gives you plus 30 cyber deck temp health which i'm pretty sure is what that 30 there represents um i've got overclock is another buff that i put up that doesn't really protect your cyber deck but it gives you like more action points and things like that um at the cost of a little bit of your connection strength which is kind of the next thing i want to talk about so this here's your connection health so your connection health uh, it can get degraded both by your actions and also by intrusion countermeasures uh, if that gets reduced to zero then you get forcibly ejected from the matrix which will do dump shock damage to your character which basically is his his the hacker's brain got scrambled a bit and he takes some damage right so you want to avoid that too um there are certain things you can do to repair that i think the hacker has a couple of talents in their talent tree that can let you like restore some connection and, and that sort of thing so um there'll probably be consumables uh, there, are, there might already be I don't know that I've looked for them but uh, consumables to restore it and that kind of thing so uh, but you got to watch your connection health in addition to the cyber deck health and the deckers health um, so the other thing down here on the left is some stats about your cyber deck uh, it's got its input output points basically this is kind of a limiter on how much you can load into your deck in a given turn right so every program that I load it will tie up a certain amount of that resource to load it. Now, once it's in memory, then it's tying up a certain amount of your memory, which is this bar here. So this is a limiter on how many, th the first bar is basically how many you can load in it in one turn. This is more how much you can have loaded into memory at a time. And then this seems to be more of like storage, which is the total number of programs that you can have available at one time, right? So like right now, I've got like these eight programs. Um, <clears throat> currently in the game, in the early access, there is no way to change or upgrade your programs. So I haven't been able to fully experiment with that, but that seems to be what it is. Um, so for the nodes, once you connect to the, the matrix host, you'll see there's a number of different nodes in here. Their layout and the number of them will vary from one matrix node to the next, uh, as well as like the, the different types, right? So you're always going to appear initially at one of these terminal nodes, which is kind of like the entry point, right? And then from there, you can connect to other nodes. And this one here is more of an access node. Uh, it, it and the firewall both are basically there just to kind of slow you down um, on, on your path through the thing. So these can have ice on them. Uh, this one did have ice. I disabled it, which is why it's grayed out. Uh, so when you're dealing with ice, there's a couple of different ways you can deal with it. So there are programs that you have, <clears throat> like these three programs here, Sleaze, Deception, and Disarm these will permanently disable uh, a particular type of ice so like sleaze disables passive ice deception disables 
uh, active ice and then disarm disables trap ice those are the three different types of ice that are out there um the other thing you can do is you can load an attack program like attack one or attack two uh and just destroy the the ice outright now you'll notice that the attack program only takes five of my action points to load into memory whereas like these only take like three or four but the difference is that attack program once i've loaded it into memory can be used to attack any type of ice whereas if i've only got like sleeves loaded into memory and i jumped to a different node like this one that had an active ice on it initially you'd have to then go load another one of these programs in to deal with it and and so on right so you can quickly add up to more action points than what just loading the attack program would do but um you know sometimes it's advantageous just to disable one and move on right and then once you've got these loaded into memory they last for a while anyway so uh, it's not like you have to do that every round now sometimes though there are reasons for destroying ice versus disabling it for example there's one mission uh, where you have to like spike a cpu node so you have to navigate find that node get to it and then you're supposed to have an option to spike its memory right to complete a, a mission um, i couldn't figure out why the heck i couldn't do that uh, come to find out it's because in order for that option to appear you actually have to destroy all the ice on that node not just disable it so uh, that is an important node as well so some of these other types of nodes here so you've got the access node you've got the firewall node there's also some data warehouse nodes that look like this here uh, there's different kinds of data warehouse nodes um, sometimes they're manufacturing data sometimes they're like you know employee records or different types of data um, the data ones usually have stuff that you can download and then sell like after the mission's over when you get back to your safe house uh, the manufacturing data is useful because those actually give you blueprints which you can use for crafting so like this one for example if i connect to this guy um, i want to scan it make sure there's no ice here before i go do anything because right now right now i've only got it at scan level one of two uh, i always want to make sure i got these bad boys to level two uh, and it rerouted me So there's clearly some ice there that did some stuff to me. Right, so uh, this uh, this one here had a uh, black hole ice on it, which teleports you randomly. Um, so, and it triggers on use of programs. So when I use my scan program, it actually triggered that ice. So now that I'm here, I'm gonna disarm this guy. I also wanna disarm this data lock because the data lock prevents download access, which basically, is why my download button's grayed out here, right? So I want to get rid of this guy. Now I can download this uh, blueprint. This one is a blueprint for first aid kit, so it allow me to craft first aid kits, right? So I want that. They're also worth like a ton of money if you get an extra one. So I'm going to download that bad boy. Um, now I'm pretty much done on this node here, right? Uh, I mean, I could scan it again, but there's no real need to. So I'm going to go back. Another thing to note, you can't just jump, even though I had like revealed this node here with a previous scan, you can't jump from this node to that node. You have to move to everyone in between, right? So and connect through them one at a time. <clears throat> Which means that like if I was like way over here on this node and I wanted to come back over here for some reason, I would have to like connect to each one in between and it takes a couple of your movement points for each one that you do. So. Uh, that's why I would go ahead and take a detour down and grab this manufacturing data before I went along, even if like my ultimate objective was over here somewhere, because it's easier to do it than to backtrack later. So that is kind of an overview, uh, quick and dirty, uh, of the hacking mechanics. Uh, I'll probably do a more in-depth tutorial uh, at a later time. Uh, I've actually run into a number of bugs uh, in the attempt to record this video, so uh, it's been fairly smooth this time, so I'm not going to press my luck. Uh, sometimes things get into a weird state and like stuff doesn't work right, so uh, I don't want to push it. Uh, it is still very much a work in progress, but uh, it's coming along nicely and 
Uh, like I mentioned before, the, the, the developers of this game have a pretty good track record of delivering. Uh, they've got multiple previous games that they've had out on Steam that were early access, and they're really good about responding to stuff. So I'm, I, I'm, I have faith that this is going to be more smooth in, in short order, but uh, there we go. Thanks for, thanks for watching.